to the Holiday and Cruise Clinic. I'm Gemma Gofton with another edition of the programme that aims to make your next cruise or holiday as problem-free and relaxing as possible. So if you have a holiday, cruise or travel-related question, here's how to get in touch. To leave a question on our viewer hotline, call 0871 423 Calls cost 10p a minute from a BT landline and calls from other networks and mobiles may vary. Write on our Facebook wall or tweet us, just search Holiday and Cruise Channel. Send a message through our website www.holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk forward slash clinic or write to us at the Holiday and Cruise Channel, Cavendish House, Brighton Road, Liverpool, L22 5NG. Now, when it comes to cruising, all we seem to hear about these days are things like climbing walls, water parks, and the bigger, the better. But there's one cruise line that's defined these conceptions of modern day cruising. Cruise and Maritime Voyages are Britain's youngest cruise line. But in the space of just five years, they're already making waves in the ocean with regional departures from eight ports in the UK and the addition of two vessels to the fleet for 2015, Azor and Magellan, joining the ever popular Marco Polo and Astor. There's something for everyone. Everyone. Well, here to answer those questions and many, many more is Mike Hall from Cruise and Maritime Voyages. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, what type of cruises do you actually offer? OK, Gemma, well, our cruises are great value cruises. We're in the value market and uh, they are of a more traditional style of cruising. And um, by that, I mean we operate smaller, more classic style ships with a cosy, home-from-home, -home, intimate style uh, on board. Uh, and they are all ex-UK cruises, so there's no flying involved, offering greater convenience for, for people. And we cruise from a range of UK ports, eight in total around the UK. Can I push your memory to remind us of the eight? You certainly can. We have London Tilbury, uh, Bristol Avonmouth, Liverpool, Hull, Newcastle on the Tyne, and up in Scotland, uh, Resyth and Leith for Edinburgh, and Dundee, which is a new cruise port for us this year. And what are the perks of cruising from the UK? Well, as I said, uh, it, it means there's no flying involved. And interestingly, most of our guests live within about a 50 mile radius of the port that they cruise from. So it offers very good, uh, uh, there's very good access to all these ports, road and rail, you can park your car there. So it's very convenient. And once you get there, your cases are taken away from you. The next time you see them, they're in your cabin. Uh, very little queuing, uh, you're straight on board and your holiday's begun. For me, the perk would be um, the luggage allowance. <laughs> because if I'm not flying anywhere, I'm not stuck to my 20 or my 22, am I? Absolutely, you can take whatever you can fit into the cabin. <laughs> <laughs> and that will be many pairs of shoes for me. <laughs> um, how many ships do you have? Uh, ocean ships, we have four now in the fleet. Uh, Marco Polo, which uh, has been with us uh, from the start, uh, celebrating uh, her 50th golden anniversary this year, really special, uh, special year for Marco Polo, very, very popular on the British market. Uh, we have the Asta, again another uh, firm favourite. Uh, she operates uh, on the German market in the summer and then uh, long cruises down to Australia for the winter season. Oh, that would be a long cruise. Mm, How long would is. that be? Well, from London Tilbury down to Sydney, that's a 45 night uh, voyage. I bet that's amazing. That's though. amazing. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, uh, we have Azores new to the fleet this year, operating from regional ports. And um, uh, brand new to us and our new flagship, the very exciting Magellan. Now, Magellan is a little larger than the other sh uh, ships in the fleet. Uh, Marco Polo being the largest at 800 passengers. Magellan, uh, we will be sailing with around about uh, 1,250, so a step up. But still small compared with the mega giant resort ships that are built these days with 3,000 plus passengers. 
And what are the perks, do you think, for the, for the smaller sizes, for the passenger? For the passenger, uh, it means we can offer slightly more unusual itineraries, Gemma, because we can reach ports that perhaps these big vessels just can't get to. So, as I say, slightly more interesting uh, itineraries. And that's significant because destination is the number one reason for passengers choosing to cruise with, with CMV. Um, so, uh, uh, also, of course, as I alluded to earlier, uh, people enjoy the home from home, more personal service. Um, I very often say, well, our passengers are names and not cabin numbers. And do you get the same personal service and feel across the four vessels? If you were to sail on one, on the Marco Polo one summer, uh, and then the Asta the following summer, would you get the same personal touches and would you get the same feel as well? Yes, that that is a very key part of, of the whole CMV uh, onboard experience and uh, 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 many of our crew have been with us since we started and very often we'll move from ship to ship so um, and we operate them in a very similar style so yes if you've experienced Marco Polo and wonder if it's going to be the same say on Azores then yes it will be a very very similar experience and they have the same feel as well you, you know sometimes they have a signature when you walk in you think oh yeah I know definitely I think every ship it's like hotels every ship has its own little identity uh, as I said, Magellan, which is new to us, uh, is, is a little larger, she's a little more contemporary in her style. Um, Azores and Marco Polo are much older vessels and have that more um, sort of teak decks, more deco feel about them. So, yes, um, it's really something for everyone. Um, and as you said a little bit earlier, uh, destination is the number one selling point for you, is the key seller. So where do you cruise to? In the summer, we cruise mainly to Northern Europe. So by that, uh, I'm taking in the Norwegian fields, the Baltic cities uh, up to St Petersburg, Iceland, which is incredibly popular now, and uh, the British Isles. Uh, th these are hugely, hugely popular with our, with our customers, the British Isles Cruises. And then in the winter, again we travel north uh, with voyages in search of the Northern Lights. And then a number of longer uh, uh, departures, which are winter escapes really, uh, and we travel south to warmer climes, the West Indies, the Amazon, South America, uh, and as we spoke just now, all the way to Australia. I mean, they sound such exciting places to visit. Do you think that cruising has, has opened up the globe to people a little bit because you have the security of being on board and perhaps you take a trip that you wouldn't take if you were organising it yourself and just going back to a hotel? Yes, exactly. And uh, it encompasses so many destinations in one, in one holiday. Uh, and the, the, the great benefit is you unpack once. <laughs> oh, we're so like-minded. That would be my thing, is that you're not rustling around for something that's at the bottom and then you're repacking again. It's very convenient, isn't it? So, the Magellan, new to the fleet. Um, why did you need to add another? Well, um, the ex-UK uh, cruises is, is the big growth area in cruising. And having had a sellout season uh, last year, uh, we felt the time was right to, to add another vessel to the fleet. And we've been extremely fortunate in securing Magellan. She's not a brand new ship, but she's new to us. And uh, uh, clearly, um, she's been very, very well received. Fabulous. We are going to have a quick break, but don't go anywhere. Now, I'll be chatting more with Mike in just a few minutes, but if you're already tempted by the idea of traditional British-style cruising, but maybe you're new to cruising, then this 
is our first time guide to cruise holidays and it's been designed just for you. It's packed full of lots of useful information answering some of the most common questions and quashing those cruising misconceptions. And to get hold of your free copy, give us a call 0871 423 4444. Calls will cost 10p a minute from a BT landline and other networks and mobiles may vary. You can also ask for a copy through our website www.holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk. And whilst you're asking for this, we'll take a quick break. See you shortly. Welcome back to the Holiday and Cruise Clinic. It is lovely to have you with us. In today's programme, we're cruising with Cruise and Maritime Voyages. And Mike Hall is still with me. Let's chat about... Food. Oh, food. <laughs> because cruising and food goes hand in hand. Very too, Gemma. <laughs> so tell us, what can you offer for people? What can they expect? Okay, it's uh, food on board. We still get a lot of questions about food uh, and what people are going to, uh, to have on board. Uh, it's a full board ex experience, and by that I mean breakfast, uh, lunch, afternoon tea, dinner, and then late night snacks in the evening. So there's no way people are going to go hungry. <laughs> You're definitely right there. Um, and what type of cuisine is it? Uh, it's an international cuisine geared to the British market. Um, certainly 95% of our passengers are British, so uh, we, we, will, we will have things which we know a British will, uh, audience will enjoy, but with an international flavour. So there is something for everybody. And if perhaps you've got dietary requirements, um, can they be dealt with? No problem. Um, anyone with dietary requirements, if they flag that up to us when we book, then we will certainly take care of that. Um, there's, there's always those options. N no problem at all for us. So we know that our meals and afternoon tea and goodies like that are included. What else is included in the price? Um, Full run of the ship, so all the facilities on board uh, people are able to utilise, uh, all your entertainment, uh, and that's a huge saving when you're comparing with a, a land-based holiday where you'd have to pay additionally to, to be entertained in the evening. Um, so there's entertainment every evening, uh, there'll be um, a show from our production team or guest, uh, a guest artist, there'll be cabarets, we have uh, classical duos and during the day, um, if it's a sea day, obviously if we're in port people are ashore, but if it's a day at sea then there'll be things going on throughout the whole day, quizzes, game shows, line dancing, Arts and crafts, hugely popular now, so all our cruises, more than six nights, we have a crafter on board. Um, so there's plenty going on. So people definitely won't get bored, that's for sure, will they? Um, let's talk about excursions then. Um, are they, there's an excursion programme. Yeah. Um, I guess you need to be organised and book those ahead of time, do you? They get we, big uptake on them? Yeah, we'd recommend that. When we publish the excursion programme, we make it very clear um, how many people we can take on any, on any given excursion. And some of them, uh, there may be only a very limited number, and you, it's, it, you can see that. So if people want one of those, then it's best to pre-register for that in advance to secure it. Um, if, it if it's uh, a, a tour where there's plenty of uh, space available, they could leave it and still book it on board. But sometimes people are a dead set, there's something they particularly want to do, particularly want to see, and we'd say pre-register it, and then you're certain of uh, forgetting it. Um, and uh, we, they've been very carefully put together our excursions, and we've you know learned across the years what's popular, what isn't, introduced some new ones, so that you know the program really will ensure that people get the very best out of their their time when they're ashore. And there's one thing I would uh, add in here, Gemma, about excursions um, is clearly we'd like people to book our excursions um, and sometimes uh, on a cruise it can become necessary, perhaps for weather uh, reasons, operational reasons, that timings, arrival or departure in a port might change. Uh, 
rarely, but sometimes it happens where we have to actually change a port of call. Now, if that happens and you've booked one of our excursions, that's all taken care of. Um, if you choose to book an excursion through an independent excursions company, then there's no allowance for that. So you could end up losing what you've paid for that excursion altogether. OK, so better to be organised. I like that word. Absolutely. It's my key word for holidays. Be There's no organized. fun here, we're just being organised. <laughs> um, do you think you have a typical average type of passenger? Um, I, I think certainly now we've added Magellan to the fleet, where we're certainly broadening our appeal of passengers. Um, we do operate for adults only. So, um, sorry, but as is not really a suitable experience for families. We don't have uh, kids' uh, facilities on board. It is an adult-only uh, cruise experience. Um, mainly, so it's couples mainly, um, or maybe small groups of friends. Um, and usually these are people in mid-age into retirement that, that, uh, that that's the bulk of our passengers. Um and if we were talking about, because before we were talking about dining and being entertained and maybe having a drink at the bar, things like that, um, is there a dress code that's needed? Uh, we recommend uh, for the evenings uh, uh, what would be suitable for wearing. Uh, we still uphold the tradition of having formal gala nights. So um, on a seven night cruise, there would be a couple of times when uh, there'd be the opportunity for ladies to dress up, uh, gents to wear black tie, you know, the captain's cocktail party. And so many of our guests really enjoy that because you don't really have the opportunity to dress up like that much these days. So people really look forward to that. But um, if gents don't have a tuxedo, don't have a dress suit, not a problem. Uh, a, a business suit, lounge suit, is perfectly acceptable. Then we have four more nights where a suit or at least a collar and tie uh, is uh, what we would expect. And then we have casual nights where whatever you want, anything. Oh, OK, so we're ticking all the boxes there. Yeah, Do you, see, for absolutely. me, I would want to get dressed up. Yeah. That would be my whole thing, yeah. is I want to get yeah. a little bit dressed yeah. up. Um, what's your most popular cruise, the bestseller? Oh, the best sellers. Well, uh, I spoke earlier about the British Isles, and they still are. So where are we going on the British Isles? What, what does the cruise encompass? We more or less circumnavigate uh, the British Isles. Really? It's a round Britain experience. Gosh. And uh, we... Uh, most of the ports of call are at the outer islands. So Scottish islands, yep. Orkney, uh, Shetland... Tobermory, um, and then we come down Dublin, calling it Dublin, Isles of Scilly, Stunning, Guernsey, and back round again. And th these are places that very often people haven't been to before. They're not inaccessible, but they're difficult to get to. So this is a real outer islands uh, experience and um, hugely popular. Hugely popular. Is there a specific time of the year you think you should do that one? You'd really get the best from it. Really, the su it's the summer. Any time from April through to September. Um, you know, you, the, the, the weather here in the UK, you, can't, you know, you, you can't be too certain. But it's, re it's a summer. It's a summer holiday. And if you wanted to be a little bit more far flung, where would you suggest to go? Well, the long cruises in the winter. Uh, we're seeing great demand for um, the Amazon, which I men mentioned. That's a 42-night cruise from London Tilbury back to London Tilbury, uh, visiting West Indies, uh, the Amazon. Uh, and we've been operating that since we started. And um, it's, it's still very, very popular. We've, we've got people that have actually cruised on it every year that we've operated it. And uh, it's, it's, it's that unique an itinerary. Um, do you have to be quite outdoorsy and fit for that one, I guess? Is there a lot of walking to be done or um, just taking what you want? Exactly, exactly. Um, there are, you know, we're seeing uh, 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 a lot of passengers on, on many different cruises that we operate wanting to do something um, a little bit more exploratory. 
Um, you know, we're doing excursions now, kayaking in the fields and th these sort of things. So there are people that want that, which is great. But some people just want to be able to get onto a coach and be escorted and shown the sights, and that's fine. So, again, it, it's, it's whatever you want to do. OK, so we've got the Magellan. That's new. We know that. What else is new? What else is new? Well, um, we spoke earlier about the Asta sailing down to Australia. And this year, uh, we are sailing her from London uh, down through the West Indies, through the Panama Canal, down to Acapulco, and then through uh, the South Seas to New Zealand, and then four ports of call in Australia. And now, we do that in the autumn, so people can take that 45-night cruise down to, uh, Aust uh, to say, Sydney, uh, stay with friends and relations for the uh, Australian summer, our winter, and then cruise back with us in the spring on a northbound voyage which takes you to Mauritius via the Cape, uh, South Africa uh, and back to London. Oh, for retirement to do so something like that. Oh. It's, a, it's an around the world. Yeah, that does sound yeah. absolutely amazing. Yeah. Let's chat very quickly about river cruises. River cruises, yeah, we introduced river cruises last year. Uh, short uh, season to see, uh, to see how popular they would be, and they certainly were. We found many of our established uh, uh, ocean cruisers trying a river for the first time and thoroughly enjoying it and coming back saying we want to do more. So this year we've added a much larger programme of cruises. We've expanded, not only offering the Rhine and Danube, but also the Moselle and in France the Rhone and Saone. Uh, and they're, again, selling very, very well. It's like you're taking over the world with river cruising and cruising. <laughs> thank you so much for popping in Gemma, and seeing us thank again. thank you. It's been it, a pleasure. Well, it's always our pleasure. Now, before we head off, just a quick reminder about this. It's our first time going to cruise holidays. It's absolutely free of charge, so why not give us a call? 0871 423 Calls will cost 10p a minute from a BT landline and other networks and mobiles may just Perry. Don't forget you can also ask for a copy through our website www.holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk where you can get in touch with your questions for future programmes. OK, that's all we've got time for on today's edition of the Holiday and Cruise Clinic. My huge thanks to Mike Hall from Cruise and Maritime Voyages and thanks to you for watching. See you next time.